Hi, welcome to the second voiceover video and today let's look at how to do a boot between uh, Windows XP or with, uh, Windows and Linux and here I have already booted up uh, Mandriva if you want to know how to boot up the Mandriva live CD from the ISO you, ch you can check my the other video out which is on live CD. So select language English. You accept the license. And here, if it comes up, you press install. It, but it should not come out because I'm actually installing it on TinyMe, which is uh, based on Mandriva. So it's it recognizes TinyMe as something something to do with Mandriva and it ac it's asking you to upgrade but let's not but if it comes up just press install select install and you ask you next what you want to to do to uh, what you want to do you can either uh, Erase your current operating system and use the entire disk, or go for custom disk partitioning. Whatever options you get, you choose uh, custom disk partitioning because you don't want to erase your comp, your Windows. And this screen will come up. This uh, shows your partition you have on your uh, machine on Windows it will be a little bit different and a little bit less complicated it will, be, it will probably be, be in blue but this doesn't make any difference Difference. you just select the big area you've got click on the biggest area you've got and then click resize to make space so, s um, I apologize that you're not seeing this whole screen, but here is what it will look like. This is uh, just resize, making space, resizing the partition to make space for your for your Mandriva installation. This is what. Uh, Basically, this is a concept of what it will look like before you do anything. The right arrow will be at the very end to this up to this gray area. <coughs> and what you need to be doing is drag it across to the left to create space for the installation. The gray area will be the free space you you make that Mandriva will be installing on. It's a free space. So here I am resizing. It will say resizing and uh, depending on how much space you're making and the memory on the computer it would take it will normally takes quite a while but yeah up to 10 minutes or so so you can do something else away from the computer but I have paused the video while it's resizing it should be quite quick and the white area there is the empty space for your installation it's a 3.6 gigabytes it's very little and it will it probably will not work on the the real installation of the hard disk. I assume that you have more space on your hard disk. So please, uh, 10 gigabytes or more is recommended. 3.6 is very little. So if you have to before you do anything, click on that empty space, and if you have the auto allocate button, click the auto allocate button. Otherwise, if you do not have the auto allocate button, which on some installer you don't have, you 
click the done button instead there and then you press previous you have a bunch of options here you choose the first option no matter what options you get which is I think use free space use free space it will allocate the partition the free space and for the installation for you it's formatting it's allocating and you just press next until you get to something like this this should not come up on your computer but since I do not have free space a lot of free space on my computer I do not have sufficient space for every ticked packages to be installed I have to disable some packages so it, it fits in within 3 gigabytes which is I know very, very little you'll be asked to select your graphical environment which is KD, RX, CD, GNOME but this whole screen wouldn't come up unless you press the advanced options but it's the graphical environment is just user preferences but I recommend GNOME myself and after you select your graphical environment you'll be off installing your system after it will take an hour and 30, and 30 minutes or so and after that you'll be asked uh, basic questions like uh, configuring bootloader, creating a user, uh, updating your system, but you don't ha really have to do worry about much about bootloader, and you just create your username. And the one thing to keep in mind is the root password. Root password is a password used by the administrator to make changes to the computer such as installing things and uh, modify some s system parts uh, keep that in mind and keep the root password safe and for administrator purposes only thank you for listening to my video